Hello and welcome. My name is Chris and in this video I'll show you how to create this animated social media post slash ad. So let's get started. For this animation I set the animation duration to be 6 seconds at 60 fps. Here in the layer panel I have my color palette that I will use for the background animation. So now I will start creating a new layer and I will name it background. And then I will drag a rectangle for the background. I had a radial gradient set on the rectangle before starting, but that's okay. And now I will select the purple color from the color palette. And then click on the Add Animator button to add the fill color animator. And then go to frame 30 and pick the red color. Just like that. Because I want to go from purple to red. I will set the quick ease out function on the keyframes and add a duplicate keyframe that has the same red fill color. Next, I will do the same but for the yellow and last for the purple color. I will select all of the keyframes and apply the ease out function on them. So the background will go from purple to red, then to yellow and back to purple so it will loop nicely. Next, it's time to add the pattern texture, which will be on the background, so I will open my folder and drag the assets in Expressive Animator. I want these three images to be on a separate layer. I will add a new layer, then I will move these three images on the new layer that I've created. I will double click on it and name it Soda. For now, let's clean up the workspace a bit, because our focus is still the background. Next, I will select the pattern texture and rotate it to 90 degrees. After that, I will scale it so it will cover the entire frame. Now let's center it on the frame. And then I will go in the appearance panel and change its opacity to 7% and its blend mode to overlay. Now that we are done with the background, it's time to work on the soda cans animation. I will collapse and lock the background layer, and then I will center the soda images to be in the center of the frame. To do that, I will click here, choose Align to Document option, then click on the Align Middle and Center. Next, I will add the Scale Animator for all of the selected images. Move the playhead to frame 45 and then also move the keyframes right there. Go to the start of the animation and then in the properties panel set the scale to 15%. Next I will add the rotate animator and then the opacity animator. I will also put the cherry image to be below the rest because it's the first image. And now it's time to continue animating the images. I will start hiding these two images so we can focus on one at a time. I will go to 1 second and 15 frames and duplicate this keyframe using Ctrl or Command plus D. Same thing for the first keyframe at 2 seconds mark on the timeline. I will go to the start of the animation and set the rotation of the image to be at 5 degrees. Then I will go to the 2 seconds mark on the timeline and set the rotation to 0. After that, on the first keyframe, I will set the opacity to be at 0%. Then on frame 15, I will change it back to 100%. Now let's play and see how it looks so far. It looks fine, but I will have to play with its easings in order to make the animation nicer. So I will set the back easing on the first keyframe and same on the third keyframe. I will invert the easing and move on to the rotation. Now it's time to see again what we have. That looks much nicer. Before moving on, I will add an ease out on the opacity. And then I will select the keyframes and I will copy them using Ctrl or Command plus C. Then with the rest of the images selected, I will paste the keyframes on them. I will also unhide them and change the rotation on the second image to be minus 5 degrees instead of 5, just for more variation in the animation. 
Next, I will select all of the images. I will focus on the timeline by clicking on it. And with the Ctrl or Command and left arrow combination, I will collapse all of the selected items. Now I can toggle their visibility bars and resize them to the 2 seconds mark on the timeline. And by the way, holding Ctrl or Command will allow you to select multiple items on the timeline. Next, I will stagger each image by dragging their visibility bars to the right, which will also move their keyframes. I will go back and play the animation. And as you can see, it looks really, really nice. For the circle bars, I will show you how to make one because the rest of the process is just duplicating the circles and placing them wherever you want on the composition. First, I will disable the frame clipping and I will create a circle right here, just to demonstrate how easy and fast you can create the circle burst effect. Press Enter to enter its context and then click on the Record Keyframes button and scale it down. And because we want to go from small to big, we'll have to select and reverse the keyframes. As for the stroke width, when it reaches frame 30, I will have a width of 0. Now let's see how it looks. All you have to do now is to duplicate them. And of course you can stagger them and move them wherever you want in your composition. So in the end you will have something like this. I made three groups of circle bursts. For the first one, I used a group of white stroke circles. For the second group, I went with black strokes. And for the third, I switched back to white. And that's how I created this social media post slash ad in Expressive Animator. And now I can export it as whatever I want, like SVG, video, animated image or sequence. That's it for this video. If you learned something, like the video and consider subscribing and sharing it with your friends and co-workers. I will see you in the next video.